Did you? That was a direction change on that. And again. Right back. Whoa, that's mental. Oh. Good morning guys, I was uh, down here trying to catch a bait so I could do a long tail tuna episode but I may end up just doing a bread and butter episode because I can't find a yellow tail to save myself but I've been pulling out stud silver tree valley like this guy and some horse brim which has actually been quite fun, fish after fish so far. <laughs> And they're pretty good fun around these pylons on only a uh, four pound line. But I'm still trying to get a yak because it is good long tail fish at the moment. But <laughs> these guys are making a bit of fun. No idea what that is. <laughs> From the Trevelli family, obviously, but those bloody fins on the back are beautiful. If anyone knows what that is, I'd be, uh, I'd be pleased to know. But it looks like a silver, but just have those elongated fins on the top and bottom. Great looking little fish, little black tip on his tail. <sighs> Haven't seen one of these before. Well, good morning, guys. I'm doing a uh, last solo mission for a long tail tuna. I say last because we've got about a week or so of big swell forecast after today, uh, which will shut my ledge down. And there's too many fish, too many people, and there's too many people fishing the ledges close to town. So I think this will be it. The same dodgy uh, support crews out here again, just scoping things out. A weird bunch. Always sniffing around out here, something. Something's going on. There you go. Very good. Long tails. That little one, the last one there, is a dodgy one, I think. All right, let's get down the ledge. It's looking absolutely perfect. I just saw tuna busting up as I was walking over. So, <clears throat> things are looking good. Got some good live baits. Don't have to dick around trying to catch them. All right, gotta get down there now. So, in terms of tackle for today's session, I've got a couple of different outfits down here, I might mix them up, might even, if they're thick, I was going to have a go at trying to get one on snapping here, but for this one I'm using 30 pound braid, 
It's Nomad braid, this one, I think. Uh, an ugly stick, it's a 10 to 15 kilo. Oh, I just got hit there, just got hit then. Yep. Oh, no. No, oh, I dropped it. Jesus. Shouldn't have been talking, Robert. Oh. Still there. Coming back. Coming back with that guy. Oh, that got him. Where is he? That got him. Oh, this is weird, isn't it? Oh, that's it. He just worked out his hook. Just worked out his hook. Oh, look at that guy. <laughs> Well, that didn't take too long. <laughs> that didn't take too long. Get a lot of head kicks from this. I was about to say I'm using that Talaga 12 as well. <laughs> a lot of head kicks. Maybe a little Mac tuna. I thought I saw him busting up on a walk out there. Maybe, also. That's the fun part, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of head kicks. Unusual uh, tuna to kind of head kick that much. A lot of head kicks. Up on the top out there, probably got about 50 metres out on me. I'm tail quite often hit a bait. You might miss them, pull the hook or whatever. Not, yeah, pull the hook out with the bait in still. Sorry. You might miss that first strike. Pull the bait out with the hook still in it. Good idea just to let it sit. Don't wind it in. But oftentimes I'll come back, pick it up. Just let it sit. And I, I've done that a few times off the rocks and then picked up snapper and dew and all other sorts of good things. Still got a fair bit of punch in him. You can tell when a long tail's still got a fair bit of go in them. When they turn, they turn out, not in. You can tell the fatigue in them when they start turning in towards the rocks at the end of their eye. This guy's still turning out to sea by himself without me free spooling him. Generally means he's still got a fair bit in the tank. Because as he turns out, he's got a full drag to do it. So those turns lack the defeatism of a fatigued fish. And you can use that information to determine whether or not to go easy, you'll go hard on them, or all these little subtle things you learn when you fight a lot of fish. Keep an eye on.
colour out there. Perfect little sashimi size. Now all we gotta do is get him up. You handy if you'd bought your gaff down from it. It's a bit tired now, isn't it? But it's really low tides, so I didn't really mind the way I put my feet in. Swell. Maybe too much swell that one. Put him on that step. Like so. There we go. <laughs> Pretty long time, start of the session. Only a nice little fish. But perfect for eating this size, so I'll keep this one. If we get any more for now, I'll try and cut them off and let them go. But it's only 7 o'clock. <laughs> I mean, no one's on the rocks already. So very, very happy with that. Great way to start the session. Still got a good supply of bait left. We've got incoming tide. So, I'm going to try and put one more bait out and see how we go. Perfect little long tail for eating. Excellent stuff. I mean, look at that for a torpedo. It's good stuff when you see that coming at your bait. <laughs> Great little fish. Right on. Do that again. Okay. Ah, I just got eaten. Just got eaten. Yep, got him. Oh, where did that go? Okay, bait number two is in. So where was I? Back to gear. So an ugly stick, a 10 to 15 kilo stick. I use relatively short rods off the rocks. A lot of people kind of raise eyebrows at that, but I just find that uh, I'm doing it so long, I don't have any dramas with drifts and line getting caught up. So I can do without the extra length, although I admit it is always handy to have it. But I find that the, uh, the short rods really allow you to get stuck into a fish. And also when you're fishing solo, like I do a lot, um, a lot easier to handle the rod and the fish when it's close to the rocks if you're trying to wash up like I was doing before. With a really long rod, they can get unwieldy. And really, with a big channel like this, it's just a weighty game. Just got to get that bait into the strike zone. Make sure your presentation's spot on. Oh yeah, good bait, good drift. Sitting right, lead is not too heavy. Oh, we've got to hit that guy. Oh, yep, yeah. shit, here we go. Got that one. He's gonna take off in a second. Oh, shit. <laughs> Alright, Mendel, come on, sometime. Trying to put the other camera on. Got a straight Whoa! Jesus! How's the direction change on that? And again. Straight back. Whoa! That's mental! Oh, Jesus! That was some hectic direction changes there, by this one. 
So it's now just on 7.30 and we've got a session second. No, we so it's now just on 7.30. Try one again. And we've got a second fish hooked. Second bait. Yeah, it's a long tail again. What a day. Okay, I'm not really I'm not really oh, there's a shark over there, look at that! Woo! <laughs> look at that go! Oh, I'm going to try and free fall in a bit and see if I can give it a chance. That was a shark hit, that one. Well done there, guys. I've just backed off. He's got no hope. Unless he's uh, got no pressure on him. Hopefully he can outswim that shark. Oh, that was a big shark up him. Still up on him. Got him, I think. Look at that, that's a shark attack. That is a shark attack. Oh, mate. <laughs> now it's a long one back, I suspect. This fish may be tail wrap. Maybe tail wrap, sort of running in a straight line. Not moving side to side at all. That usually indicates tail rabbit. Plus a good long run, but. As my mate Laurie says, you're not putting any hurt on them when they're doing that. Oh, there's an ocean of tuna out there, mate. You see them everywhere. Well, you can see those other tuna out there blowing up behind where this guy is. So here's a classic pile off the rock. It's got a lot of line out and he's arcing towards the rock. The further out they are, the less effective that free spooling technique is. It's really something that works when they're in clothes. So sometimes I'll get hell bent on running out along the point. No amount of free spooling can change their mind. All you can really do is just try and get as much as back as you can. Try the free swallowing technique or get high. So you clear rocks and stuff. So we'll just have to go a little bit further. I'm always kind of open for that moment where they turn inside. No, he's still going the wrong way. Still going the wrong way. Come on, mate, turn, turn, turn. Okay, that turned him out. Just doing a big wide arc. So typically long tail. Big wide arc. I'm worried about that shark though. I can see he's just a couple little trail out there. Just saw his fish bob out. He'd be 50 meters out. 40, 50 meters. There he is at the top. Turn, I think that's where we are. You can see when they turn in like that, you can see them rippling there. Oh, I can get a fair bit of line back. He turned in, but now he's straightened up again. He'll like... This is where I hooked that one up the other day, so I'm going to freeze fill this hole, mate. And there he is there. It's not a bad fish at all. He's alright. 
that guy. That's a shot to get anyone's bloody blood pumping. Big long tail. Beating away in perfectly clear, flat, calm water. He's a good fish. Come on, mate. I'm going to let you go if I get you. Well, I think that shark missed him, hey? How good's that? So just remember that next time, guys, if ever you've got a fish that's getting about to get axed by a shark, give them a bit of freeze ball, give them a head. They can outswim them. But they can't do it if you've got a drag set the sun's on. <laughs> that's sort of kicking of the rod tip there. Just after he comes out of every turn, that's actually the braid, the sensitivity in the braid. As the lion's pulling off his fins and whatever, there he's there on top of the soil there. Oh, he's a good fish. Oh, he's a solid fish, look at that guy. Oh, right up. I'll get him up into that door. He's a good one. He's a good one. Oh, the soil coming there. Right. Not there. Uh, wrong side. Come on, mate. Oh, he was tamper. Shit. You're a big fish, aren't you? Come no, no, no. Up. Up, come on. I'm gonna try and get this guy back in the water, guys. He's a thumper, look at that. Right, uh, second month of the day. 27.30, let's get this guy back. There you go. He swam. Woo. Yeah. Made it. All right, guys. And what call it quits? Cracker morning in anyone's books. I got my hat trick. Okay, not technically a tuna hat trick. I got two tunas and a good sized tailor. But it's a fish hat trick. Uh, yeah, absolute pearl of a morning. One long tail I'll take home to the missus. One still out there swimming around. Got the tail of a dew bait tonight. I'm throwing off the beach, this is how we go. Just gonna stick the drain up now. Seen a few dolphins and whales carrying on, so see if we get a couple of shots of those. Show you how beautiful this spot is that I fish. I hope you enjoyed that one. I certainly did, making it. Can't ask for better. All right, see you next episode. Bye for now. Oh, whether well, you saw that whale out there then or not, Jesus. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Something's trying to eat that. Look at that, guys. 
balloon's still on, I think. All off now. Yep. Oh. Nah, it dropped it. I dropped it. It's back. It's back. It's taking a line on me. Yep. Oh, it's tail, I think. Big tail. Big tail. There's my Jufi's bait for... Keep him. I'm going to go jew fishing the next couple of nights. These are great bait. Either that or I know Laurie likes to smoke them, so he'll go to good use either way. Nice Taylor. Bloody bait thing though. He ain't my line bait intended for a tuna, but still good fun. Alright, we're going to try that again.